<laughs> what is the greatest sin one can commit in Judaism? According to the Torah law, there are three, what I guess we could say, cardinal sins. These are sins that, regardless of the situation, uh, an Israelite is absolutely forbidden to transgress, even if it means that he would have to give up his life. These three sins, in order of severity, are the prohibition of idolatry. We are only allowed to worship the one true creator, blessed is he. The second is the prohibition against murder, and the third is the prohibition against uh, those types of intercourse which are forbidden by the Torah, those types of intercourse that the Almighty strictly forbid in the Law of Moses. Uh, all other types of commandments, though we are obviously not to freely violate, if we are in a situation where one must, one would otherwise lose his life unless he violates, so in that case, the Israelite is supposed to violate that particular law, except for those three mentioned before. So let's say, for example, a person is wandering through the desert and he's starving and about to die, and all he can find to uh, eat is some pig meat. <laughs> Random example. So in that case, not only is he allowed to temporarily set aside his commandments in order to preserve his life, but according to the Talmudic stages, he's obligated to eat the unkosher food, the forbidden food, in order to sustain his life. That is because there is a verse, a passage in the Torah, where it says that the Almighty commanded us these commandments and we should live with them. Meaning that the general rule is that, the, that we are supposed to live. <laughs> the commands were not given in order that we die. The only exceptions are those three cardinal sins. Is this word Judaism the name of the Jewish people's religion as authorized in the Torah? The word Judaism is not the name for the faith of the people of Israel as authorized in the Torah. Neither the Torah nor anywhere in the Hebrew Bible is the term Judaism given as an official name for the religion of the people of Israel. In fact, it's not mentioned at all, nor is it mentioned in the Talmudic text. I don't know what the earliest text is that mentions the word Judaism as the faith of the people of Israel, uh, but the earliest to my knowledge is a place in the New Testament, and of course that is not a text which is uh, considered authoritative by Jews. If so, where can this word specifically be found in the Torah? It's not in the Torah. The reason why I ask is because most learned people of your faith, when talking about and or teaching about your faith, refer to it as Judaism. Well, I also refer to our faith as Judaism uh, at times because in certain circumstances it's too confu it can just cause confusion to go through a long explanation uh, to describe or to refer to the faith of Israel without using the term that is already commonly used. Judaism is the term which is commonly used in the English language. In some other languages, other terms are used. I know in some European languages, they call it the Mosaic religion. <coughs> the Hebrew Bible doesn't give any one specific name for the uh, religion of the people of Israel because the religion of the people of Israel as, uh, uh, as authorized through the divine revelation by Moses is simply a continuation of the religion which already existed before Moses, the religion which existed uh, at the creation of the first man, and that is simply reality. In the Torah faith, there is not religion and then reality. Reality and religion are the same thing. It is integral. In fact, it is intrinsic to reality that there is a creator. Without the creator, there is no reality. Uh, the uniqueness of the faith of Israel is not that it is the only religion, uh, though we do hold it to be absolute truth, but rather it is a special covenant made with uh, the people of Israel and whoever chooses to join them uh, 
to be the most fulfilling way in which to live one's life and to draw closer to the Creator and spread goodness throughout the world. Under this covenant, when a person rebels against this covenant, whether as an individual or the nation as a whole, so all sorts of curses are to fall upon the individual or the nation, curses which were specified in the covenant uh, made in the Law of Moses. These are curses which only fall upon the people who are obligated in this covenant and not upon the remainder of the people of the world. Uh, individuals who do not choose to join this uh, covenant remain under the binding laws of Noah. The laws of Noah are the minimum obligations of the world. And even though they have that minimum set of seven laws as their obligations, certainly it is praiseworthy and proper for them to do more than that. Otherwise, their faith would probably be so weak that they wouldn't even be keeping the seven laws of Noah. That's my opinion, but I've seen it verified over and over again. Want an apple? I welcome you to consider Judaism. However, if you feel that Judaism is too heavy for you, then please consider the seven laws of Noah, which is the bare minimum that God requires from humanity. If you're interested in either of these, please visit your local Orthodox rabbi and ask him to teach you more. For more information about Judaism, please visit our website, bejewish.org. There you will find videos that will help you on your journey. Thank you.